how old were you when you were um the note taker for that meeting with president clinton yeah, and uh, it was, uh, in greece who was the meeting with oh in greece it was with the prime minister the foreign minister and the defense minister and then on the american side it was the president uh, the secretary of state the national security advisor and the ambassador i was 30 i had just turned 35 35 and that was the first time you ever met clinton or that was the first time i had met clinton yeah and how, what was that meeting like what was the purpose of that meeting it was a a meet and greet okay uh he didn't come to go to greece often did he no in fact the only other presidents that have been to greece have been eisenhower and hw oh wow yeah um, he specifically came to Greece to apologize for overthrowing the Greek government in 1967. Mm. Yeah. Which was a major, major deal. I yeah, I'll tell you a funny story. I used to watch the Greek news every night, right? To practice my, my, uh, spoken Greek. Mm -hmm. And, um, for two weeks before Clinton came, uh, they derisively coined a, a, a name for him, a title for him. It was Planetarchis. It means the planet ruler. Mm. So they wouldn't say, O Proedros Clinton, President Clinton. They would say, O Planetarchis Clinton, the planet ruler. Clinton is going to come here and grace us with his presence. You know, that kind of thing. Mm. Every single night on every news channel, it's O Planetarchis, O Planetarchis. And it would piss me off, mm. right? Then Clinton came and he's like, we love you. You love us. This is the birthplace of democracy. We owe our culture to you. We owe philosophy to you and medicine and mathematics, language. We owe everything to you. And I want to apologize from the bottom of my heart to the people of Greece for the, the illegal activity of my government in 1967 to install a military dictatorship here that you have never gotten over. You know, mm. people are still traumatized. As soon as he gets on the plane to leave, right? I put the news on. They're like, wow, we were wrong about him. What a good man. What a kind man. Oh mm. my God. He should be the president of Greece. It was like, wow. it was crazy the turnaround it was crazy but that meeting i will never forget that meeting as long as i live just because i'm standing there like i can't there have been a couple of times over the course of my career where i'm in the room and i'm looking around like i can't believe i'm in this room like surely they're going to figure out that i'm a fraud right didn't he walk up to you and he was like talking about the, the hors d'oeuvres or something like yeah, that? yeah he offered me <laughs> <laughs> i got there before he did and when when I first got there, the, the prime minister arrived with his people and I, I offered the prime minister a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, whatever he wanted. He said, no, 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 I'm fine. I said, okay. So I'm standing there because again, I'm the note taker. So my job's not to, to get comfy on the couch. My job is to stand discreetly with my notebook and take notes. So Clinton comes in and it's all hugs and kisses on both cheeks and slaps on the back. And he asks the prime minister, uh, would you like, uh, we got sandwiches. We got all, it was a, a table of food that went like the entire length of the, of the room. It was ridiculous. A thousand dollars worth of food on this table. And he didn't want anything. The foreign minister didn't want anything. The defense minister didn't want anything. And the Greek note taker, of course, wasn't offered anything. <laughs> <laughs> so then... <laughs> He turns to me, I think I've told you this, and he goes, may I offer you something to eat? And I said, oh, no, thank you, Mr. President. I'm fine. And he goes, oh, are you with me? And I said, yes, sir. I'm with you. He said, I I'm sorry. I, I thought you were Greek. I said, I, I kind of am, but not really. It's a long story. Yeah. <laughs> was Hillary there? Oh, yeah. What happened was. We finished the meeting. The meeting went about 45 minutes. Uh -huh. Not a single substantive word in the whole thing. And Clinton walks out with Berger, who was the national security advisor. Albright, who was the secretary of state, walks out with the ambassador. And then I walk out. So they're standing in the hall. They're two little groups. And I'm standing against the wall. So I'm about three feet away from Clinton 
maybe I'm four feet away from Clinton. And then he finishes his conversation with Berger. So Berger walks over to Albright and the ambassador. So Clinton is standing like where you are and I'm standing where I am. And at the end of the hall is the elevator and the elevator opens and Hillary and Chelsea get off the elevator. And she's got this, this mug. You could just tell like, oh, this is going to be bad. Just the look on her face, like, oh, she was ready to explode. <clears throat> so she walks right up to us. And it's the four of us then. And one thing that I learned very quickly about Bill Clinton is that he absolutely hates silence. Mm. Something, he's so gregarious and so outgoing. Somebody has to fill the void right. with, with a joke, a story, something. Yes. So he says... Boy, we sure had a good time at the Parthenon this morning, didn't we, Hill? Silence. She just looks at him with this look like she wanted to kill him. So he repeats himself and he says, we sure had a good time at the Parthenon this morning, didn't we, Hill? And she says, Jesus Christ, Bill, it rained all day. I'll be in the room. And then she walks between us and he looks at me and I'm thinking to myself, you poor man. You have to sleep next to that every night. So he looks at me, he goes, let's get the fuck out of here. And he walks to the elevator. I follow him to the elevator. Secret service runs down there. We go to the basement. There was this raucous crowd of 500 women in the basement. It was the throwing themselves at him. The, pretty much. <laughs> it was the Hellenic American women's chamber of commerce. And he gave this rousing, like amazing speech. There's, screaming we love you bill you know that kind of thing mm -hmm. i don't know how he did it wow i don't know how he did it what what do you think fueled that relationship that resentment she had towards him or i don't know if it was resentment but yeah well, it was you, well, this, this was only this was only a year after the monica Lewinsky thing and oh, a year after yeah oh, he okay, had humiliated okay. her and right 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 you know she had eyes on her own political career by then she she was weighing a run for the Senate from New York. Mm. She didn't need him anymore. Right. Yeah. And you know, I, I, it's amazing. They stayed together. All this it's time. amazing. I was friends with the, uh, with the American ambassador to Luxembourg. He's a Greek American. Who's now the president of, uh, of, uh, Oh, some big university. I can't remember now which one, but anyway, he told me the best story. He said that he had been, he had been a businessman. And multimillionaire, self-made millionaire. And so he was the head of fundraising for the Clinton campaign uh, for the Southeastern United States. And his reward was he was named ambassador to Luxembourg. So he said that when the Lewinsky scandal broke, all the fundraisers got together and called each other and said, he's got to resign. Right. We have to we have to confront him together and we've got to get him to resign. Mm. Gore can become president and then Gore can run for his own term in 2000. So um, Clinton agreed to get together, not knowing why they were getting together, but they said that they all needed to see him together. He said they rented a room, a, a banquet room at the uh, Willard Hotel across the street from the White House on uh, on 15th Street. And he said that they had met the night before and they had rehearsed this, that they are going to, they're going to be strong and they're going to be united and they're going to tell him that he has to resign or that none of them are going to raise money for anybody anymore. This is going to be it. They have to resign and make room for, for uh, Gore. And so he said, Clinton finally gets to the room and before anybody can even say anything, he says, I have wronged you friends with this, like almost this quivering, almost cry in his voice. And he begs their forgiveness and he pleads for them not to abandon him, that what he did was wrong. And he's so sorry. He can't believe that he did what he did. Now, like every president, he's a sociopath. This is probably an act. It's probably all made up. You have to be a sociopath to be president. You climb to the top on the backs of everybody else around you. That's just the nature of the system that we have, right? So the ambassador said to me, nobody ever mentioned 
resignation. He said, by the end of the meeting, he said, most of us were crying. And then somebody started chanting, Clinton, Clinton, Clinton. And that's how it ended. And that's how he walked out with people chanting Clinton. And I said, I said, he suckered you. He said, of course he suckered us. He knew exactly what was going on. Yeah. He knew exactly what we were there for. And he suckered every one of us. He said, but that was that Clinton magic that people used to talk mm. about. And I said, I saw it that, that yeah. day in the meeting. I saw right. it myself. He had a meeting it, out of his hands. Yeah. Wow. Wow. 